Okay, so welcome to this short tutorial on VCV Rack. And what I want to do in this is just start from real basics. This is the sort of template you get when you've, after you've installed VCV and uh, run it for the first time. But I want to step back from this because if this is the first, you know, this, this video is aimed at people that, you know, first time use of VCV and sort of don't really know much about modular. So what I'd like us to do to start with is just to delete everything. So if you just move your mouse over each of these different um, modules and click the delete button, our objective is just to start with a nice, a nice clean slate. That's what we want. Okay, so we've got our rack and you can see little power units at the back. And I can scroll up and down with my mouse wheel and I'm just gonna do right click and I'm going to select VCV down at the bottom. You might have other modules, but I'm going to select VCV here. And these are all the core modules, and these are the modules that we're going to be looking at um, in, this, in this tutorial. Now, with modular synthesizers, you've basically got uh, sort of signal generators, um, and then you've also got modules that actually process those signals. Um, so, if the first, one of the most important modules for us is something called a, a VCO or a voltage control oscillator. And what I'm going to do is I've, I've got this module here. I'm going to right click, and I'm also going to put in a scope. Okay, so there's 400 quid we just spent <laughs> if we're doing this uh, with real analog systems. So this is the beauty of the digital stuff that we can we can play around with different ideas and um, experiment with sounds. Um, right, so let's just look at the interface to start with. So I can, I can roll my mouse wheel up and down, okay? If I press, I'm on a PC by the way, so the, um, the difference with the Mac will just be sort of the, the, the control buttons um, or the alt buttons. If I press the control button, I can zoom in and out. Um, and I can move any of these modules around just by dragging it with the left mouse button. A nice little thing I can do is if I press the control key, I can actually push them along such as that. Now then, if I want to connect um, this, so this voltage control oscillator, you see these, um, these sort of, these are like, in essence, like three and a half mil sockets. And these here, the ones with black rectangles are outputs. So if I connect this output here with the left mouse button and go into X in, I see my sine wave, all right? and I can change the frequency and I can change uh, other parameters. If I move this around, it's still connected, it stays connected, which is great, and I can still push things around like this. Um, if I want to delete one, I'm gonna press the right mouse button. Okay, so let's just um, reconnect that, and the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add, because I wanna listen to it, I'm gonna add something called a, an audio module. Here's my audio module, and I'm just gonna select direct sound, and then I'm just gonna select, that one should be okay. Now remember these are inputs and these are outputs. I'm gonna connect this output here to my direct sound here. Now, if you've already got a connection, if I click left mouse button, I'm just gonna disconnect that. I don't wanna do that, so I'm gonna have to press the control key to add another cable, and I'm gonna click it up here. Okay, so I can hear that. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add one that's in the left speaker and I'm gonna press control key and add to the right speaker. Okay, so now I'm in stereo. You can see the wave here, you can see the amplitude of the wave and you can see the frequency. If I change frequency, it changes, which is what we want. Okay, so let's just, um, Let's just disconnect this just for now. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to put in a voltage controlled amplifier. So if I right click and go to VCA, which is this one here, that enables us to actually control the volume. So if I put my sine wave and put it into, I'll leave that one there, put the sine wave into here. Remember to press the control button and then I'm gonna go from the output of here into here. I'm gonna break this one by pressing the right mouse button. 
and I'm going to go right key to there as well for stereo and I'm also just going to put it into the oscilloscope so we can see the wave. So now not only have I got my frequency change but I can also change the amplitude, turn the volume on and off. Okay, so that's the first thing we're doing. So the next thing probably nice to, to play around with is to, just to hear the different the different um, the different waves. Um, so sine wave is our sort of our pure signal. And you've got your triangle wave. Saw wave. And our square wave. Okay, I'm just going to put this back to sine wave. Right, so the next thing that I'm um, I probably want to do is to have control over the pitch what's being what's being played so I've got a MIDI keyboard so I'm going to right click and I'm going to go um, let's have a look MIDI to CV click on that and I'm going to put that over here on the left because I tend to want to flow from the left to the right now if you haven't got a MIDI keyboard you could just use you could set this to computer keyboard and then you could set QWERTY and in fact let's do that so um, the key thing here with modular is it's using um, one volt per octave which is en enabling us to control the pitch so if I, if I connect this to this input here voltage octave if I then um, lift my volume up a little bit see if I change press keys like that was S and D it's changing the pitch, and I can hear I can hear that uh, that change. But I actually want to use uh, a keyboard, so I'm going to put that to Windows MIDI, and I've got a little Archery key step plugged in. Um, so if I press a key on the keyboard now, hopefully, there we go. C. All right. Okay. Now that's fine. But one problem we've got is we've just got this constant signal. And what happens is when you press a key on the keyboard, it sets the gate level to high. And when I take my finger off the keyboard, it drops the, uh, the gate signal to zero. And I can see that on here. So if I just, um, if I just break this, um, if I just break that, and if I just go straight from gate, and I put that into here, into Y in. If I press a key on my keyboard, you see that purple line? It's gone high, I've taken my finger off it's gone low. So we're going to use that, um, that gate signal and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that gate signal into the control voltage here. So now if I press a key and if I bring my volume up, if I press a key on the keyboard now I get the signal and if I take my finger off it turns off. Okay, so I've, I've, I've nearly built my sort of basic, my basic synthesizer. So the next thing that I would probably want to do is to give a better shape to the sound because it just, it doesn't sound great. You know, it's straight in, 100% and it's straight off. Um, and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to build uh, an envelope. I'm going to use an envelope for this. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to do something called um, and use, it, use an ADSR envelope. Now, if you haven't heard of ADSR envelope, I'll just show you on here. So this is time in X, and this is in this instance we're, we're looking at the amplitude, and that's what we're going to be using the amplitude of the signal. So when you first press a key, whatever you've got set at A, which is the attack time. Um, you're going to go up to this level. So based on the time, it's how long is it going to take you from when you press the key to go to your maximum amplitude signal. And in this instance, it'll be whatever you've got set up here. Your decay time is then how long does it take um, to go after the attack to go down to the sustain level. And the sustain level is an amplitude in this instance, okay? So um, it's not actually a time. So you're setting how high that um, sustain should be. 
and then when you let go of the button, so when you, it's going to stay at this level, this amplitude, until you let go of the button, and when you let go of the button, the release value is, or time is, how long is it going to take to go back to zero? So you've got attack, decay, sustain level, and release. And attack, decay, and release are all time values, and sustain is, in this instance, the, the amplitude. So let's see this um, applied here. What I want to use is I want to use that envelope to control the amplifier here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to disconnect everything because it's probably easier just to start again. And we need an extra item, which is the ADSR envelope. So I'm looking for an ADSR envelope. ADSR, there's one there, so click on that, and here we have. Now if you remember, if you look back on this here, the ADSR envelope is triggered when you press, when the key is pressed on the keyboard. So I'm, straight away I know I need a gate. Okay, so my gate is gonna, when I press the key, it's gonna trigger the ADSR envelope, and here I can set my parameters for attack, decay, sustain, and release. This envelope here is going to be outputted as a control voltage and I want that to go into my VCA. Okay, and that is going to control whatever audio signal is coming into here. So let's just put a sine wave in. And I still want my voltage per octave to be in here. And then the output of the VCA is going to go to the audio. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, bearing in mind I know we're going to do some more, um, add some more to the mix, more audio to the mix later. I'm just going to add a mixer. So I'm just looking for a mixer. There's one there, so click on that and drag that down. Okay, so, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my audio out from my voltage control amplifier and put it into my mixer. So now hopefully when I press a button on the keyboard, it's going to be whatever is set up on the attack, decay, sustain, release. And in fact, what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to turn off the audio for now. And if I take the output here, I should be able to actually see it. I should be able to see it in, in, the, in there, and I'm not. So why is that? So I've got my output from there is the control voltage. It's because I'm looking at the wrong thing. What I want to be doing is I want to be taking that one into there. There we go. Okay, and I'm just going to change the time. There you go. So now I can see my envelope. So if I just tap it here, there you see that curve there? That's the attack. So if I make the attack really sharp, when I press the key, like now, you see how sharp that is? It just goes straight up because my attack time is so um, is so sharp. If you double click, it resets it to whatever value it is. So the shape that you've got, um, the shape that you're seeing here, that's my sustain now. See my sustain is gonna stay at that level, which is whatever I've got set up on the ADSR. And when I let go, that's my gate is going to go to zero and it's going to set my control voltage from the ADSR back to zero. So let go and down it goes. You see that curve on the, that curve down is dependent on the release time. So if I make that like much longer, for example, hold my key, if I then let go, it's going to take a lot longer to, to go down. So there it is, see? And then if I drop that and make it nice and tight like that, if I push a key and then let go, it's going to go straight down like that. So let's just double click to put these back to where they should be. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my sine wave into my VCA and hopefully we should have the audio and we haven't because that volume is set correctly there. Voltage that's gone into there. Oh, idiot. I need to connect the mixer. This is live. Sorry about this. I'm not um, 
it's a bit rough and ready this video but hopefully you get the, the point so I've taken my output mix here and I'm going left and right so now that should be my control volume so if I press a key there you go now I don't know if you can hear that but it is much warmer much softer yeah and I've got a little um, sequencer on my keyboard so if I just just press that okay so it's, it's a nice um, much nicer tone and, and, and sound with the with the, with the ADSR filter okay so the next thing to to think about is um, and by the way I've obviously got mixer mixer control here so the next thing to think about is what we've got here is monophonic monophonic which means obviously we can only do one note at a time so if I've got my finger on one button here if I press another one I'm losing the first but on the latest version of VCV rack we can right click and go to a polyphonic system if you right click and you go to four for example that means I can have four notes playing simultaneously watch the cables they'll go they'll go um, thick so now my cables have gone thick which basically means that we've now um, got a polyphonic modular system, which actually I think just means it's just basically got copies of everything that we've got here. So if I, if I press, so now I can do chords. Okay, so that's how we do a, uh, a polyphonic system. The next thing I want to look at is, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit and scroll down. What I'm looking at now is sequences. So let's add a sequencer. And a sequencer allows us to have, there's one there. A sequencer allows us to have a lot um, or a number of notes or control voltages or whatever we want coming out. Um, and let me, it's best just to explain it with, uh, with a demonstration. Okay, so. Let's say that this top row here, our pitch. So in fact, let's just keep that there for now. I'm just going to add another. In fact, I could just do Control D. Let's let's take um, let's take a VCO. Let's duplicate that. And let's take an ADSR. Why not? Let's duplicate that. Control and D. And a VCA. Where's that gone? Yeah, let's bring that down, pop that in there. Okay, so I'm going to take row one. Okay, this is flashing. It's basically going to this row, or this column, and this column, and this column, and this column. It's just going round and round in a loop at this tempo, which I can change with this clock dial here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take row one, and I'm going to put it into voltage per octave. And I am going to use the gate and I'm going to put that into control voltage. And I am then going to, let me think, no, I'm not, I'm going to put that into this gate here, take the output of that into there, and I'm going to take the output of this into my mixer. Okay, and I of course need to add a sound wave. Right, it's just one constant pitch at the moment, and that's because all these top row figures are all the same. So if I start to fiddle with these, okay, so you can see that's setting up a, a basic basic sequencer with an, with an ADSR as well. If I change the clock, okay, I can speed it up, just zero that there. Okay, so that's how the, um, the sequencer works. But I can also use this um, for creating like a, um, like a kick drum. And the way I'm going to do that is if I just that one off and if I
drop the frequency down and lift, lift this up a bit here. You can use the ADSR, make it really tight and then you can start to get a, a basic kick drum sound. So let's just drop this. You can hear that? my basic kick drum there. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to, if you f click on these lights, I can actually say, okay, let's just uh, play on these. Yeah. Okay, so it's a basic, a basic, um, a basic kick. Okay, so what I want to do now is to add a snare sound. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another sequencer. Just duplicate that. So I can just press Control and D. Bring that down here. And I'm going to use a noise, uh, a noise signal, a white noise. Um, this is a new module, I think, that's been added. And if you look for noise, where is it? It's that one there. Where's it put it? noise there it is okay so let's put that down here and I'm still going to need an ADSR and a BCA so let's put these down here right so let's take the white noise as input in here let's take the gate signal again into here and let's take the output of the ADSR envelope as my control voltage. These are nice and tight again. This is where my this is where my snare is going to um, the noise from my snare. So, so it's using white noise to get that <laughs> yeah uh, into here. That's nice and sharp. Set. Um, these triggers here and then I'm going to go from output into input 3. Just drop the volume down a little bit there, make it a little bit sharper. Okay, so the next problem I've got is that these aren't in time. So the, the easiest way to, to fix that would be if I take so basically when this when this is when this is firing here this column this is going to go high so if I take that and go to reset there we are okay so that is now synced with that. and I should still have a polyphonic synth up here. One nice little touch is if you notice on the VCA up here when you've got it in um, polyphonic mode. You can see them all. Okay, so that's great. Um, what else can I do? I can control the tempo of it. I need to control them together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add something called a low frequency oscillator, which is really just for control voltages, which are much slower than you'd get out of the VCO. So let's do use a square wave because in essence that's on or off. And if I just tap that into do an external clock and then press control into external clock here. Hopefully that's all synced up, which it looks like it. And then if I change the frequency here, there we go. Okay. So other things I can do, I can, um, let me just turn the volume down on this, on 
these two. Okay, so you can also do um, pulse width modulation, which is when you, you're basically changing um, the, the, the width in the square wave um, when it's high, or you can also do frequency modulation. So if I put the saw, put that into saw here, um, if I then change, let's, let's use this ADSR here, and I can actually use that filter there. Take this out and put it into um, frequency modulation. Let's just add a slight bit of um, frequency modulation there. Um, okay, the, you want to be subtle with this because if I'm uh, if I'm way up here, it's just going to be crazy. Okay, so small is good. Small changes is good. So nice and subtle. Okay, and you could also have, for example, you could set up another. Um, if I put let's have another low frequency oscillator, LFO. There, okay, and I could take, for example, a sine wave. And if I do pulse width modulation and change this to square wave, and just put this on a little bit. But let's put the um, signal in here as well, and you can see that. Um, no, it's not that one, is it? It wants to be that one. Pulsating of the um, no, that's still the frequency modulation. Sorry, I have to put it on to no, that's right. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, so it's the sine wave. So it's a nice smooth transition of the pulse width modulation. If I change the frequency, you should hear a difference. If I change it to square, it should be more sort of on or off. Okay, so that's quite a lot of um, stuff that we've covered in this real introduction to VCV and modular synthesis. So basically we've got low frequency oscillators which are creating sort of voltage uh, controls which are low frequency, you can't really hear them, um, but they're very useful for controlling other, other modules. We've got this VCO here, which is our signal generator, and it can generate all these different waves. And we've also controlling the pitch using the volt, um, voltage per octave, which is coming from here. We've got frequency modulation, which, which is a bit more advanced stuff. Um, pulse width modulation, which we're using this low frequency um, oscillator for. We've also covered ADSR filters, attack, decay, sustain, and release. And um, we've got sequences here. We've learned how to use those. and. Um, synchronize them if you want more than one, and how to control the timing with the low frequency oscillator there. And we've also looked at creating a, um, a very basic kick drum and, uh, and snare using both white noise and the sine, low frequency, lower frequency um, sine wave with a, a very tight ADSR filter on both and the mixer. So thanks for watching, hopefully that's been useful to you if you're starting out in VCV and, and modular. It's, uh, VCV is a fantastic free open resource for, for everybody to use and there's a whole plethora of different modules you can choose. I mean I've only covered some of the core modules here with VCV but you can see there's loads that you can download for free um, which are absolutely fantastic so you can start building, um, building up your, your digital, digital patches. Okay. If you like that then uh, please subscribe and I'll, I'll do some more videos and uh, that's it. Cheers.